Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. This is part four of my top 50 favorite comics of my collection <laughs> of 2021. So uh, th as I said in the previous videos, this is my top 50 that was not included in the original top 50 video. I'm going to spend a little more time with these comics in terms of explaining them and why they're important to me. And I'm going to show some extras as well. So there's a lot of bonuses in this video. So with all that said, let's get into the comics. So um, got my stack here of comics. The first one is this one. Uh, Batman 227. Uh, the reason I like this comic so much, and the reason it's number 20 on my list of top comics, top 50, is that it's just, I really love the art. <laughs> it's Neil, uh, Neil Adams art. Um, the one of the lower ones in my list, if you check out my other videos, which I'll link in the description, I show uh, another e Neil Adams uh, comic where um, it was signed by Neil Adams. And I didn't necessarily like the art that much of the cover as much as I do of this one. This is the one that I really like of his. This is actually my favorite Neil Adams uh, cover. And I have a bunch of comics with Neil Adams art, but this just is my favorite by far. So this is Batman 227. And it's actually an, like a, an homage cover. I think it's, I forget which Batman it is, but it's a much earlier Batman where it was a different artist that did it. But I actually think Neil Adams did a better job of rendering the cover. <laughs> so this is... Um, uh, Batman 227 and it even says yeah Detective Comics 31 it's an homage cover of that so it's you know it's kind of cool so yeah so that's Neil Adams uh, Batman 227 and that's number 20 on my list now this is kind of a funny one uh, <laughs> that's on my list but I actually really like this comic uh, it's Tank Girl uh, number one and it's not the first appearance of Tank Girl but it is her first series. Um, she actually appeared in some British uh, comic. Uh, you know, it's it, this is a really hard to find comic, <laughs> and I just I just think the cover is just so outrageous that I, I really like it. Uh, you know, she's got the teddy bear, the crazy uh, <laughs> the crazy boob thing going on, and it just sort of reminds me of that Madonna kind of uh, you know where she had the crazy uh, outfit. Um, so yeah, so it's, I don't know, I just really like the cover. It's it's purely about the cover. Uh, the story is not bad. I, I did read Tank Girl way back when. Uh, yeah, it's it's really about the cover. <laughs> it's a crazy cover. Really like it. It's, you know, it's not like, as I said, this top 50 list is a little different than my t other top 50 list. It's not about the most expensive comics in my uh, collection. It's really about the ones that I like the most. And this one, I just really like the cover. So uh, yeah, it's on my top 50 list. <laughs> so that's uh, number 19. The next one, another one that I really like the cover and I like the history behind it is, see, a totally different genre, <laughs> is uh, Crime Suspense Stories number 20. This is uh, one of the Seduction of the Innocent uh, books and it's just a really great comic I mean it's it's just really gruesome his eyes are rolling back in his head his you can see the broken bone in his neck it's just a really well rendered uh, you know piece of art <laughs> and you can even see somebody else hanging in the background or maybe that's his shadow I'm not sure but it's it's just it's just really well done um, I really like uh, these um, EC horror comics and this one especially because it has that history of coming from the whole seduction of the innocent that um, it's just a really great one to have in my collection. It is probably one of the most notorious of the seduction of the innocent books. There's one other one that I haven't it hasn't arrived yet but I am getting it. Uh, that's even more notorious but um, you know this this one is truly a great it's a classic I think a classic cover so uh, yeah this is uh, number number 17 or 
18 on my list of top 20. Okay, so the next is kind of an interesting one. It's Aquaman number one. Now, I also have the showcase with Aquaman, the first, uh, first Aquaman title. But this is the first Aquaman series. Uh, maybe I should take it out of the plastic so you can see it a bit better. It's not a high grade, but it's, you know, it is, it is a great comic. Um, I was actually a fan of Aquaman way back when, when he had the TV series on, uh, you know, on, in the 70s. So, yeah, I, you know, I kind of liked the early Aquaman. So, I always liked the idea of, like, you know, swimming around the oceans and talking to fish and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Which is probably some of the lamer things about Aquaman, but I actually kind of like that. Um, so, to get his first, um, first comic, I guess, first series... Was kind of cool. Now Aquaman actually made his first appearance in more fun comics and that's from the 40s. This is a Silver Age comic from 1962 and it's also the first appearance of Quisp. I'm not sure who Quisp is but I think Quisp is like one of his characters. Um, but yeah it's just kind of a very cool comic. I just really like this and to me this is like kind of a semi blue chip i don't you know it really depends on how aquaman develops in the future he's sort of um i don't think the aquaman movie was that great it had so many things that bothered me uh but um you know you know G uh is it jason momoa uh, i think is is a good aquaman it just he got he's got to be a little bit more fun i think but um you know, I, I really like Aquaman, and so this was, you know, to get the first Aquaman is kind of cool. <laughs> so that's that's really the reasoning behind it, and it's number 17 on my list of top 20. So the next ones are kind of, this is, I'm actually going to show two, even though it's really number 16 on my list, and it's Night Nurse. I, I've read these, this full series, there's only four comics in the full series. And Night Nurse, this is Night Nurse number one. It's a fairly rare comic. Um, you know, uh, it's the first appearance of, uh, I think it's Linda Carter. Um, I think it's Linda Carter, no, or she, one of the, not, not Linda Carter, it's actually Linda Carter appears in this other book that I'm going to show. Uh, it's one of the other nurses, the one that was in Doctor Strange. <laughs> I'm, I'm blanking on her name, but it's her first appearance was in this comic. So it, basically the story is it's like uh, three nurses who are, at first they don't really get along, they're from very different backgrounds, and they, you know, get put into nursing school, they're in nursing school, and they're, they're going through all the, you know, the struggles of being a nurse, and, you know, that challenging environment. So it's a very, it's actually not a bad story, and um, it's a, you know, it's something sort of, I don't know, cool about it. I don't know. I like Night Nurse, so this is number 16 on my list. I also want to show, because it's sort of tied with this other one, and this is Student Nurse. This is actually the first appearance of Linda Carter, and this is an older book. Uh, it's from 1961, and it's just, the, the Night Nurse is from, I believe, 1970-something? Let me guess. 72. So this one's a little bit earlier and it's super rare to find this one believe it or not um i managed to find it off heritage and i just uh really like it uh it's just kind of cool to get those first appearances and those early uh silver age comics so i, I kind of like this one and i got it in a reasonable grade too so that's quite happy so that's my uh top 16 now we're getting into uh, a little bit higher ones, a little bit more rare as well. This one is Captain and Kids. Now, Captain and the Kids, this is from 1934. And I've seen some places where they call this the very first comic. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's pretty fragile. <laughs> um, but it's like the first comic book. 
if that makes sense. I, I, there might be older ones, but I've seen things where they said that this is the very first comic. And that's cool, but that's not actually the reason why it's on my list. Uh, the reason it's on my list is this book was the, one of the first comics that I actually got as a child. And it was uh, from my grandmother. So my, my grandmother gave me this. I didn't really understand <laughs> the significance of it because I was really young when I got it. Um, and it's just a... I, you know, I put, like, you can see, like, I put, like, a hot chocolate or something. <laughs> I used it as, like, a, you know, I didn't want to damage the counter of my, you know, nightside table. So I put my hot chocolate on this, and you can see it damaged the book. You know, that's how ignorant I was as a child. <laughs> and I drew it, I colored in it and stuff. It's, like, it's, it is mangled as a result of me getting this as a child. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it is still a cool book. It's one that I do cherish in my collection because it, you know, my grandmother is long past now. Um, and it's just a very cool comic to have uh, in general. So, um, and if it wasn't for me mangling it, it was actually in really good shape. <laughs> uh, you can see even the, the spine has come apart since, you know, when you get it as a child, you kind of mangle things. So uh, it was actually in really good shape when I first got it. If it was in that high, pristine shape that I got it, it'd probably be like a $10,000 book. In this condition, not so much. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's pretty cheap, actually. So, uh, but this one is very special to me because it is something my grandmother gave me. It's a very cool collectible as well because it is an early comic book. And, um, yeah, just very cool. So, Captain and the Kids, number one. So that's kind of an interesting one. Now... I've actually mentioned this comic that I'm show, going to show in other videos. Uh, this is Howard the Duck, number one. Not an expensive comic. <laughs> uh, actually, I have two of these now. But uh, this one is the special one. So this one, uh, when I was a kid, my parents wouldn't let me get um, comics that were like... Uh, like superheroes or the ones that were cool in my mind I was like oh that that's Superman or Spider-Man looks really cool I'd really like to get those but my parents would always buy me like Disney comics or like the gold key comics like a lot of the Disney Uncle Scrooge and and you know um you know things like that where it was like more cartoon related car comics and I saw this one when I was going to a store that they, they had it up on the wall and um, it was actually a coin store because I collect coins as well. And I, I saw it up on the wall, it was $10. Now back in the, back, back, this is back in 1980 time frame. So $10 in, in 1980 is like 50 or 80 bucks now. It's like a lot of money. So, um, and probably it's not even worth <laughs> that much more now. Um, so the thing is, when I saw it, it was 10 bucks. I was like, oh, wow, that's really great. I, I really think it's cool. I mean, I just like the whole duck, you know, cartoony kind of thing. And then you got like almost like a, um, a red Sonia in the background. I'm not sure if you can see that, but so it almost looks like red Sonia. And it's just a really great, um, uh, comic. It just looks really cool. Like, you know, it's this kind of quirky thing. And I was like, I have to get it. So I actually saved up my allowance. It took me like a couple months at the time to save up enough money to buy this comic for 10 bucks. That just shows you. <laughs> and I actually did like a whole bunch of chores and it was like, I actually worked to get this comic. So um, it was kind of funny. Uh, and I was just a, I was pretty young at the time. So uh, it was pretty exciting when I got this. And this is really one of the comics that got me into the hobby of collecting comics. Uh, you know, before that, you know, I got the comics that my parents would give me, but those were really meant for reading. They weren't really meant for, like, collecting. And uh, I would just mangle them. They were they generally rolled and, like, just abused. But this one was the first one where I actually treated it with care and saw it as a collectible. And it really got me into the idea of collecting comics. So that's why it's kind of significant to me. It's not like it's a rare comic or a really valuable comic. 
but um, I did see it though sell recently for six hundred dollars on Heritage. So maybe, maybe it, uh, if it was a higher grade, it would be worth something. But uh, you know, in this grade, it's probably worth about ninety bucks. <laughs> so not an expensive comic. Maybe my, not my best investment, but uh, it was what got me into comics. So I really do love this comic, and I think it's just I still like Howard the Duck. He is an awesome character. So this is a really cool Howard the Duck. And it's one of the few where he's not wearing pants. So that's that's actually significant because later on he always wears pants. So that's kind of cool. And there's a whole story behind that. So the next one on my list is this one. Um, this is Spiro, uh, I believe it's 1000, oh, what, what's the number on it? 1000, oh, 171. 1071. So this is the first appearance of the Smurfs. Another cartoon that I loved watching as a kid. I even like um, would program my uh, VHS to try to record all the Smurfs as they came out. So I actually collected on VHS way back when I was a kid all of the Smurfs. So if you're younger, you probably wonder what the heck is a VH v VHS, but <laughs> that's what these older people like myself would use to record from TV. <laughs> so we'd record all the episodes of whatever using a VHS and that's what I did. So I I collected all the Smurf cartoons. And w now that I'm older, like a couple of years ago, I was like, hey, I gotta get the first appearance of the Smurfs. So I actually had to research and find out where did uh, Smurfs make their first appearance in comics. And it was in this one, Spiro from Belgium. And this is from 1950, I, uh, 40, no, 19, like 50 something, it's like the early 50s. Uh, no, 58, sorry, I'm trying to remember the date. Um, so yeah, October 28th or 23rd, 1958. So, you know, it's a, it's a fairly old comic. Um, it's pretty rare. Uh, mine's a bit mangled. I think it has like some issues along the spine, but it, it is like a probably, a, yeah, it's a 2-0. So it's, a, it's not a high grade or anything. Um, even in this grade, it's actually a pretty expensive book. Um, I've seen high grades of these go for like 10,000, you know, so it's, a, it is a pricey book. Um, but in this grade, not so much. Um, but it is a great book because it is the first appearance of the Smurfs. Now they don't make a cover appearance, which was kind of disappointing because, you know, it'd be nice if they were on the cover. So the first cover appearance was a few issues later in um I, I believe it's yeah it's the next issue <laughs> uh 1072 and this is where they make their first cover appearance and you can see like papa smurf and all the different smurfs at the top so i'm a big fan of smurfs i'm not sure if, you know how people feel about the smurfs if you like the smurfs please comment below which of these comics that i'm showing would be your one of your favorites so i'd be curious to hear about that uh, but I really did like the Smurfs, and this is their first cover appearance. So these are both on my list as top, uh, my top 20. So yeah, so that's, that's the Smurfs. Next one is Tales of Suspense number 52. Now, I'm actually a big Black Widow fan. Uh, I really liked her in the movies, uh, Je uh, Jennifer... Um, I was going to say Jennifer, Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson. I was going to mess her up her name. I was going to call her Jennifer Lawrence. That would be bad. Um, so yeah, Scarlett Johansson. I really liked her in the movies. And I liked the whole idea of a superhero that's not a superhero. Like not a super powered hero. Like, you know, if you look at pretty much all of the Avengers, except for maybe um, Hawkeye. <laughs> Um, they all have superpowers. They're all like overpowered and they're like super strong. Like you got like Hulk and you got Thor, but you get Black Widow, who is this character that is just really well trained and she knows how to fight on her own. So it's kind of cool that, you know, you get somebody that isn't the typical superhero with superpowers in a superpowered team. So I, I kind of like that idea. And so this book, I've been, I was searching for for a while because I knew the Black Widow movie was coming out. I knew that I wanted to get it, but it was really hard to find. And 
every time people were like, you know, there was the fair market value at the time and people wanted two, three times the fair market value on eBay or stuff. So I searched around and I ended up finding it on, uh, I think it was Comic Link. And um, they, they had a good price on it. Actually, I actually found it on um, my comic shop before and I put a bid and the guy sold it before I, I got it. <laughs> so it sold as I was buying it. It was really frustrating. But then this one came up and it's a restored one, but it is very, it's very slight restored. It's professional, it's semi-professional, uh, just a little bit of color touch. And I'm not sure where the color touch is. I believe it's, it's not significant. I believe it's right in this area. Just a little bit of purple was added. And I'm not sure if it bled through or anything, but you know, it's a bit of color touch. So uh, I really like this comic. Uh, I like these early Tales of Suspense ones too, because I like Iron Man as well. So this one made my list because of that, that it's the first appearance of the Black Widow. And I like the fact that she's on the cover. And I like the fact that she's in that sort of older style. Like she kind of looks a lot different than the Black Widow we know from the movies. I kind of like that older style. So I, I think it's kind of cool. And um, yeah, I, I just really like um, this comic. So, and the very last one, number 11 on my list is this one. And this is purely because of the cover. Uh, it's, to me, something about this cover really speaks to me. I think it's a, just a brilliant cover. I'm going to take it out of the bag so you get to see it. But it's one of the most, to me, it's one of the prettiest covers of all time. It really is. Um, it's just a, something about the greens, the way that she's posed. And this is Dolphin uh, Showcase Presents number 79. Not many people know. Like, this is like kind of one of those obscure comics that not many collectors know about. But to me, it is just a, just a beautiful cover. It's just a really great cover. It is her first appearance. Actually, this comic, um, though it's a 5-5, five five, it's basically because of a bend right up here. Now, if that was pressed, this could probably get a 7. <laughs> you know, it really is, a, it does really present well. There's nothing along the spine, a little bit of maybe foxing, but nothing too serious. Um, and it's just a really, um, really nice, uh, you know, when I saw it, I was like, oh, I have to get that one because it was just, even though it was not the highest of grades, it just presented very well. Um, and I just really love the cover. It's just something, there's some, I don't know, you can see that kind of flow in the way her body's posed. Uh, I just think it's a really great cover. And, you know, that's, and that's why I like it. So, um, I used, I actually display it at the very top of this room and I always look at it you know when I come in here and it's just one of my favorite covers so purely about the cover it is her first appearance but she's not a major character or anything um, and it's just one of those comics that a lot of the more like uh, experienced collectors go for and it's from 1968 so it's a Silver Age comic and it's kind of a little bit rare a little bit rare Okay, and that's it. That's my uh, top uh, 20 to 11 comics in my collection. The next video, which will be my fifth part, will be my top 10. And there's some really big ones, really rare comics in that, that list that I'm, I'm sure will kind of shock <laughs> a few people that, that they're in there. But uh, they're really cool comics. So stay tuned for that video. It's going to be coming out in a couple days. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this list. Please comment below. What are some of your top 50 comics that you like? Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.